Okay, so welcome to this video on the playlist of dermatology cases. I'm Dr. Ria Hinabet Ria, he board certified dermatologist. Here I ask a few questions in the form of cases and then I'll answer them. The images are extracted from different books and websites. I used mainly Bologna textbook of dermatology and also Fitzpatrick's in general medicine for answering them. Let's jump into cases. So I'm going to start with case one. A known case of HIV lesion since three months ago. What's the diagnosis? As you see here, there are multiple papules and nodules on the face. The biopsy specimen reveals capillary proliferation with protuberant endothelial cells. In varitin stary stain, interstitial clumps are identified. All these findings, red to brown papules and nodules, the vascular proliferation and the background of HIV are indicative of bacillary angiomatosis that mainly caused by Bartonella hensella and to somewhat Bartonella quintana, mostly affecting HIV patients when the CD count is lower than 200. The vascular proliferation in bacillary angiomatosis is due to VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, that signals the endothelial cells. In comparison with catascratch disease, that is also called by Bartonella, the history of bite is only found in 20% of patients with bacillary angiomatosis. Other cutaneous findings rather than papules and nodules include cellulitic erythematous plaque amplification, crusting, and ulceration. Bacillary angiomatosis rarely could involve organs other than skins, as bacillary pleosis hepatis. These patients manifest with nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and increased liver enzyme levels. The mainstay of treatment of bacillary angiomatosis is antibiotic for at least three months. The first line are doxycycline or erythromycin. However, long-term therapy may be needed in immunosuppressed patients. Question 2. Lesions since 4 months ago. According to this case and this, these pathology slides, which topical treatments may be to somewhat useful? Lesions since 4 months ago. As you see here, a red-violet patch on the nose since 4 months ago. On histopathology, Vascular proliferation is evident in papillary dermis extending into reticular dermis. And here, collagen bundles are separated by jagged vessels. And also there is a sparse infiltration of lymphocyte and maybe the plasma cells. All these findings. Vascular proliferation separated collagen and the red-violet patch could be indicative of Kaposi sarcoma as a borderline malignant vascular neoplasm. I memorized Kaposi sarcoma as the disease of 4 and 4 or 4 and 3, 4 types and 3 to 4 stages, patch, plaque and nodular stage and according to some textbook there is also a tumoral stage so you can memorize this disease as the disease of four four types and four stages also i mentioned here as three stages the fourth 
types are classic, African endemic, iatrogenic, and AIDS related. All these subtypes are caused by HHV8, human herpes virus 8. The classic type is more common in men, actually the old age men, that predominantly involving the distal lower extremities, the legs. The African endemic subtype involve young African males, especially of equatorial Africa, and it is associated with node involvement and fulminant and fatal curse. The iatrogenic subtypes, as its name indicates, is seen in patients with the background of cancer, autoimmune disease, and organ transplant patients who are receiving immunosuppressive drugs such as corticosteroid and cytotoxic agents, especially the cyclosporine and the ACE-related or ACE-associated is more common in homosexual men. The lesions in this type may be solitary or multiple and affecting mostly the trunk and mid-face as this case. The range of treatments for Kaposi sarcoma is wide. As the recurrence rate of this disease is high, deciding the treatment is based on the, pa on the, on the age of the patient, the number of lesions, the extent of involvement, and patient immune system. So, in rapidly progressive Kaposi sarcoma, Especially when visceral involvement is encountered, systemic chemotherapy is indicated. However, cryotherapy, laser ablation, photodynamic therapy, and even topical alitretinoin and topical imiquimod are all useful in treating superficial lesions. So, for this patient, topical alitretinoin and topical imiquimod could be the answer. Question 3. Nodular lesions since 6 months ago with red to brown hue. What's the probability of lung involvement in this case? As you see here, a violaceous nodule is located on the nose since 6 months ago. On histopathology, granuloma formation could be found with well demarcated border and a sparse infiltration of lymphocyte indicative of sarcoidosis. When the granuloma is well demarcated, it's it called tubercles. Tubercle is not confined to sarcoidosis but also could be seen in tuberculosis, some types of leprosy, and brillium and zirconium granuloma formation. As you know, sarcoidosis mainly affect the lung, but also can affect other organs as the, as the skin. In the skin, sarcoidosis is a great mimic like syphilis. The lesions could be seen as papule, nodule, subcutaneous lesions, and tumoral lesions. A subtype of cutaneous sarcoidosis is called lupus perineum. When the lesions are involving the nose, the cheek, and the ear, and they are resembling perniosis, they called lupus pernio. The importance of lupus pernio refers to its association with lung and upper respiratory tract involvement. 
actually lung sarcoidosis is found in 70% of patients with lipospernia and upper respiratory tract sarcoidosis is found in 50% of patients with lipospernia. So the answer of this question, what's the probability of lung involvement in, in this case is 75%. I'll continue other cases in the next video.